uh, Dhirendra Prasad. I'm a radiation oncologist and a neurosurgeon, and I direct the Gamma Knife Center at Roswell Park Cancer Institute. So the main reason for us to uh, have the icon is because the icon is actually designed as a result of feedback from users like us who have done Gamma Knife for an extended period of time. The icon in its mask-based technology offers new features which we could not yet use in the Gamma Knife. That is one big advantage of the icon. I think it will open up treatment to these patients using the same quality of plan that we are used to delivering with the Gamma Knife, but because of its ability to fractionate, it can now be extended to new indications and to tumors that were beyond the border of our perfection patient guidelines. It also offers new functionality for patients who are in a stereotactic frame. All of us who have been doing this for a while realize that the frame provides an exceptionally high level of reproducible accuracy. However, like any other fixation device, it has its limitations and many of us practice in centers where imaging time and imaging modalities can be limited by the fact that there is a frame on the patient's head. We increasingly find that the MRI scanners and the coils that are available have become far more sophisticated and smaller and clearly having a frame on the patient's head limits what sequences you can use and what coils you can use. So even in the frame-based patients, the fact that you have onboard imaging on the Gamma Knife in the icon will actually permit you to perform non-frame-based MR sequences that delineate the pathology better and then combine them with onboard cone beam very rapidly generating a plan that you can work with. So I think it opens up new workflows even for a frame-based patient in a single treatment session. So the icon will change my case mix by transitioning some of the patients that were by default treated on non-Gamma Knife technologies within our department back to the Gamma Knife, opening up the dose profile of the Gamma Knife to these patients. So these are patients who by definition have either tumors that are larger or closer to critical structures that require fractionation. They will return to the Gamma Knife. That constitutes a small percentage. It also opens up new indications. I think it opens up indications, particularly in the skull base, where you are either involved in a retreatment scenario or a primary treatment modality for patients who are outside of the range of the frame fixation right now. So both of these groups of patients together will increase the number of patients that can benefit from the Gamma Knife and open up some new ideas about both treatment and fractionation. So if you ask me why we would move our patients who are currently being treated on a LINAC uh, with a small MLC back to the Gamma Knife, the answer lies in the dose profile of the Gamma Knife. The dosimetry with the Gamma Knife has always been proven to be superior, particularly in the tight gradients around the target and the low volumes of normal tissue exposed to the fall-off dose. When we treat our patients currently with a state-of-the-art LINAC, we do accept a larger 4-gray, 12-gray, and higher dose gray volume within the normal structures, which usually is the brain in this setting, although it would apply to the skull base and to the upper spinal cord as well. The icon with its adaptive replanning represents a completely new idea in delivering hypofractionated radiosurgery. 